everybody, Mark Dawes here. Now, it's Wednesday the 9th of February today, 2022. And there's been some interesting items in the news this last week, which I've blogged about and spoke about on various social media platforms. And this was one of them. This is a driver who mowed down a knife attacker released without charge. So this is someone going to the defense of another person. So we're talking about the law of self-defense here. And it says a driver who plowed his car into a knife attacker in a desperate attempt to stop him killing mother of two had been released without charge, Um, which is a really interesting thing, okay? Because this shows how far you can go in self-defense when you're going to the defense of another person. And it says here, you know, I hope that in my actions, a message has been sent to society. Should you see an evil, it is a duty upon you to stop it with your hands. If you cannot, then you should stop it by speaking out. If you cannot, then at the very least, you should hate it with your heart. So more and more we're seeing violence in our society, but this is a very encouraging story about someone who actually drove his car into someone who was stabbing someone to death and he was released without charge. Now, I've blogged about this, and you can see this on our blog site here. But the thing I'm interested in is is this part here. I made this comment. I put, so why is it that in some industry sectors where staff are at a high risk of violent attacks, are staff disciplined for using reasonable force, even when the police would state that there are no criminal charges to answer to, and state that what the member of staff did was reasonable in the circumstances? And why are companies whose staff are at serious risk of injury or death adopting codes of practice, working practices and deliver training that falls so far short of what the law allows and allow themselves to be advised and investigated by incompetent inspectors who have no training or understanding of reasonable force? And more importantly, why do these organisations and their senior management not only agree to it, but embrace it and actively allow it to happen? Now, this is not new. This has been going on for years. But this blog post and the link to that article, I put it on LinkedIn here and you can see it's generated 39 and a half thousand views of the post in the feed so that just goes to show you you know the interest in this aspect of self-defense and you know in this case defense of another but that's not the only one that's been in the press this week because we've had this one this is a disabled mum who spent eight hours in a cell after fighting intruder with a hammer to protect her baby and you can read about this because we've got it on our blog site here So you can go and actually read about this one there. But basically, she fought off four people who came to her home and threatened to harm her and her her baby. And she actually hit one woman with a hammer. Okay, now I wrote about this here. And this is what they said. The four intruders turned up the mother's house after one threatened to harm her two-year-old child, saying, watch what I'll do to Charlie. I'll come and splatter him all over the road. And again, this highlights our rights to self-defense and, well, everyone's rights to self-defense, you know, but we still hear again the same old stories of companies disciplining staff for using force to defend themselves or others, which in many cases wouldn't result in their arrest by the police. And even if it did get to court, would be thrown out. Uh, And myself and my colleagues who worked as expert witnesses in this field see this all the time. And uh, by the way, if if you're thinking about becoming a self-defense instructor, there's a link at the bottom of each post there that I've just shown you where you can find out more about our BTEC Level 3 Self-Defense Instructors Award course. But I put this on LinkedIn here. Um, I put this on three days ago. And that's already generated 10,500 views. So once again, this whole aspect of self-defense and self-defense of another is very high on the agenda at the moment. And as we read every day, particularly about the emergency services, you know, there is more and more violence towards these people. But I just want to get the message out there that you do have the right to defend yourself. You do have the right to defend others. You know, this case here, you know, a mum, and she's got a brain injury, used a hammer because she honestly believed her two-year-old son was at risk because someone said they were going to come and do her son in. You know, that's reasonable. And in, in this case here, we had a driver who intentionally mowed down a knife attacker released without a charge. So once again, you know, this shows how far you can go within the law. It doesn't mean you won't get arrested. It doesn't mean you won't get charged. But it's whether or not the case will go to court. And these two uh, uh, cases here highlight that, you can go to quite a degree to protect yourself and other people and not end up in court. And if you'd like to know more about becoming a BTEC Level 3 self-defense instructor, we've got a course running on the 9th and 10th of April, as you can see here. It's on our website. We've got another one on the 1st and 2nd of October. Um, £625 plus VAT, and that includes your accommodation for the Saturday night on the course, and you can book for a previous night as well if you want to. But there's loads of reasons here, you know, why you should become a self-defense instructor. There's a huge market out there at the moment, particularly coming out of lockdown. 
And, you know, there's so many bonuses that we give away with this course as well. I think it's about 1800 pounds worth of bonus, you know, 1817 pounds worth of bonuses with this course. Uh, but we are limited on places, okay? But if you want to see what people say about it, you know, we've got testimonials on here. And you can actually see videos from people who've actually attended this course talking about the course. So, for example, if you, if you click there, this was one guy who was nervous about attending. He's now teaching and doing great things with, with his self-defense business. Uh, we've got some great guest speakers. Lofty Wiseman and Ginger Johnson are coming down. And what else have I got on here? Let's have a look. Yeah, we've got some testimonials here. So there's, there's 28 video testimonials here. If you click here, you can see all these testimonials from people who've done video testimonials for us. And that's not to mention the, the reviews we get on, on Google. So if you're thinking about becoming a self-defense instructor and you'd like to get a proper qualification, a BTEC Level 3 award in self-defense instruction, then we're the company to train with. Hope that helps. Have a great week. Speak to you soon.